Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. Now, some of you may be looking at the title of the video and being like, well, you're like almost two months, three months into uh, 2023, and you're already, you're looking back at 2022. Aren't you a little late to film this video? My response to you is, well, that just means that I've had sufficient time to reflect on 2022. And well, today we're going to be talking about the most overhyped bottles of 2022, or the most overrated bottles of 2022, depending on how you want to look at it. Now, before we start, I gotta say, if you enjoy this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Now, this, this was not an overhyped bottle of 2022. This was a very, very tasty one. This was the Jack Daniels Pecan Finish one. Uh, distillery series, uh, might've been Tennessee only, I'm not sure. 120 proof, absolutely fantastic, friggin' delicious. Amazingly delicious Jack Daniels. There is pecans, pecan pie, pie crust, vanilla caramel, whipped cream on top. That's delicious whiskey. Now, these seven bottles that I'm gonna show you, these are the most, honestly, they're the overwhel they were underwhelming to me throughout the year. I've tried to like them, and they're not necessarily bad whiskeys. Like, these, these aren't like, don't buy these whiskeys, because they're not that bad, but they're not that good either. These were ones that were just kind of meh to me. My opinion, your opinion may vary. Some of these on this list, you may have been like, wow, that was eye-opening. That was an amazing bourbon. And if it was, and you love it, I'm so glad. Because you know, here on Whiskey Row, we are all about finding a bottle you love. So hopefully you did in 2022. And I know in 2023, I'm trying to find bottles that I love. Now, the first one up tonight, gorgeous bottle. Absolutely love. Beautiful, beautifulness. This is batch two of Castle and Key Small Batch. Released in 2022, they even left it on the bottle so it would be easy for me to know to put it on this list. It's okay. It's not very good. This bottle is one of the most gorgeous bottles of the year. I mean, the, the glass in this bottle is clearly one of the best bottles of 2022. The whiskey inside it, nah, not so much. I didn't think it was that bad. 99 proof, I guess, for a first or second batch release from Castle and Key. I expected a lot more. It was okay. Hopefully they uh, they get better over time. But this thing, batch two, kept uh, aged four years uh, from the Old Taylor Distillery. Such a like legacy at Castle and Key. And I just had so much like... I wanted to like it. I really did. Kentucky Owl St. Patrick's Edition. Now, this is the Wise Man Bourbon's Kentucky Owl uh, Bourbon Whiskey Limited Release. It was a collaboration by Luis McGuane and John Rea, um, Irish whiskey bonder and a master blender dude. I don't know. 100 proof. Again, this wasn't like that bad. It also wasn't that good like it just kind of was there i mean kentucky out some of their stuff is legendary and i i continually am unimpressed and kind of let down by kentucky Owl overall and some people just love it and and i'm just not getting it i guess i don't know maybe it's just me maybe it's my palate maybe it, i just don't get the vision the beauty the deliciousness of kentucky Owl. but for whatever reason this limited release st patrick's day again not bad it's not bad whiskey i actually even import it and i've even enjoyed some of it but for a kentucky Owl release it was very very underwhelming blue run reflection one now i have not had a great experience with blue run many of you know I have not really liked Blue Run in the past. I've had three, three or four different bottles, this being the third or fourth one. This one coming in at, um, what, 95 proof? Yeah, 95 proof. Sadly, this is actually the best Blue Run I've ever had. And every one of them I've had and I've tried and I've not really liked and I've gotten rid of because I just didn't like it. I traded it to somebody, gave it to somebody else to try who might enjoy it more. Uh, I've had the High Ride Bourbon. I've had... The 114 year, I think I've had one of the rise, and this is the reflection one. This is actually the best one in my opinion, and that's not saying a lot. He continued to put stuff out. This was uh, bottled uh, for 20, 2022. I picked this up. Where did I get this? I got this one down in Georgia. I'm kind of done. Like, um, and, and it's not to say that, that Bull Run's bad whiskey. It's it's not. Like, I know some people out there really, really like Blue Run. Uh, did I say Bull Run? Well, whatever. This is Blue Run, has the, the, the pretty butterfly on it. And it, it, it's not that it's bad whiskey. And, and this one in particular, 
is actually really nice. It's light, it's balanced. But again, you're paying $99 for this beautiful bottle and some okay whiskey. It's kind of like the Castle and Key, although the Castle and Key is like half the price of this. Uh, this is definitely better than Castle and Key, don't get me wrong. But, you know, they continue to, I continue to get fleeced by these guys. I buy them because I'm like, people, some people love them. So I got to I gotta pick them up and I got to try them. Maybe I'll find the one that I love. And I, I just, I haven't. So it, it's not bad. It's nice caramel, light notes. It's decent whiskey, but for $99, it's not worth it. This is Hidden Barn. This, is, this particular one is uh, batch 210 proof. Uh, the only reason this is disappointing or underwhelming uh, or, you know, overhyped, whatever you want to call it, is because Jackie's I can't join the company. Had this, like, if if Hidden Barn had just put this out without Jackie's I can involved, people would be like, yeah, okay. You know, it's a young distillery. They're they're figuring it out. It's coming along. But they, they charged a pretty penny. I paid, like, 76 for this thing. It's a grainy, cereal grain, uh, mushy apple... It's just not there. It's like they're they're trying to figure it out, and new distilleries need that time. We need to give them time to figure it out because it does take some time. Had Jackie Zykan not been involved with this company, we would have been like, okay, cool. It's a craft distillery. They're doing some interesting stuff. It's a little malty, a little grainy, little Cheerios, and not that bad. But because it was associated with her, then all of a sudden we kind of were like, whoa, Jackie Zykan joined them. They must have some great stuff. Remus Repeal 6. Now, I'm a huge, 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 huge Remus Repeal fan. I have really, really loved Remus Repeals in the past. Remus Repeal 2 is my favorite all time. Remus Repeal 5 is a close second. And Remus Repeal 6 is near the bottom of the list. They raised the price. I paid $120 retail for this bottle here in Virginia. And now that is overpriced. For this bottle, it's very much overpriced. It's got a nice balance of caramel, a nice balance of spice. It's got a little vanilla, but overall, it doesn't have the depth and complexity of some of the earlier uh, Remus Repeal Reserves. And for that reason, it's just a little overhyped. They've they've priced themselves out of the whiskey they're putting into it. This is MGP, Ross Squibb, whatever you want to call it. And it's it's not bad. But for $120, it's definitely not worth it. But like I said, it's not bad whiskey. Again, this list is not about bad whiskey. It's just stuff that's overhyped. It's over... It's just not... It was just a little disappointing to me. Now, the next bottle on this list, I don't actually have a bottle. Now, what happened was, is that somebody sent me a sample. And Weller CYPB is not that it... It's not that it was a bad bottle. It's that... it. So how I got a hold of it was um, Scott E., I believe, one of our, our great Patreons, sent me a blind sent Jamie and I a blind. And in the blind, he included a Weller CYPB along with like, you know, four other bottles. And we, Jamie and I both, we both blinded it. And in the end, I think it came out in third or fourth. And there was some really good competition, but that's kind of our opinion of it was kind of like, well, that was, that was okay. And then when we saw it was CYPB, we we're like, you know, you expect so much from a Weller and you expect so much more from Weller CYPB, which is so sought after, so loved by the community so by so many people and when we had it we were just kind of like oh, that's okay and i don't know why people hunt it so much and it was really really underwhelming for me now it's not necessarily a only released in 2022 or first released in 2022 like the rest of these but it was the first time i had ever had it and i want you to know about it because if you are just just killing yourself trying to find a weller cypb guess what you don't need to just stop just Pick up, honestly, Weller Full Proof is way better than CYPB. My single barrel Weller I have, which I, is honestly kind of overrated and overhyped as well. Um, it's better than the CYPB. I was not I was not enthused by CYPB. It's, it, is, it is definitely overrated, overhyped in my book. And that was my experience from 2022. Now, the last bottle on this list, though, I had really high hopes for. And bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, whatever. Go watch my video where I talk about Tennessee whiskey and how Tennessee whiskey is technically bourbon. But with all that said, let me grab the bottle. This is Jack Daniels Bonded. 100 proof Jack Daniels Bonded. It's only $40. It's a good buy. Um, and I have a Jack Daniels uh, Bonded back here from the, the old Bonded, which is fantastic. So, so good. Super hard bottle to find. Very rare these days. Really, really good. This and that bottle are not at all alike. That's really, really good. That's special Jack Daniels. This, 
this is not that good. I keep trying to love this bottle. I keep going back to it, trying to sip on it, trying to enjoy it, trying to find out what's good about it. And I'm really, really struggling to do it. It's got some really nice caramel, a little bit of peanut shell, just very, very mild. A little peanut butter as well. A little bit of a toasted, kind of a, a toasty bread kind of thing going on. Not bad at all. Uh, for 100 proof, for $40, it's not that bad. The problem is, is that I was expecting this special bonded, that was really hard to find, the Jack Daniels bonded, bottled and bond from the past. I bought it down in South Carolina and I bought the triple mash at the same time. And I didn't expect much from the triple mash and it didn't let me down because it was not a whole, not a whole lot of goodness either. I didn't like that one very much either. Uh, but that I didn't expect very much of. This one, I expected it because of that one. It let me down because like, really, I'm looking at this Jack Daniels Distillery Pecan Finish one. This thing is like fan friggin' tastic. This is so, so good. This isn't so good. These are all bottles that I was just a little underwhelmed with. They just, they really just didn't capture me in 2022. And some of these may be ones that you love. And if you did, like I said before, I'm glad you found a bottle you love. That's awesome. But you know, these, whether it be the price, whether it be the, the, the taste, and for the most part, it wasn't the, the price. It was just, you know, you have an expectation. Like with the Remus, you expect it to be a certain way. With Kentucky Al, you expect a certain level. With, you know, with Blue Run, you'd expect. With Castle and Key, you would, ex you would expect. And maybe that's my flaw, my fault, that I had higher expectations than I should have. Because like I said, most of them aren't like necessarily that bad. I just had higher expectations than I should have. And some of that may be on me, but some of it may be on the distillery and some of it may be on the community, which means it's all the way back on me no matter what. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.